let's double click on period. So yeah. what do we need to understand um, about the menstrual cycle in order to to then kind of think about um, changing a training program or nutrition um, at different stages uh, for, for a woman who's in sort of the, the pre-menopausal uh, phase of her life? Yeah, so if we pull back and I'll just give that brief textbook explanation of menstrual cycle, menstrual cycle length. So day one is the first day bleeding. Around day 13, you have a luteinizing hormone surge and then ovulation. After ovulation, so around day 14 or 15, we still then get into the high hormone phase, the luteal phase, which generally ends at day 28 when those hormones drop and the next period starts. When we look on a more granular aspect of the menstrual cycle, we know that hardly any woman is a typical 28 day. So we see variations from 25 to 40 days, and it's that low hormone phase that shifts. And the reason for the low hormone phase shifting is because the body is really trying to mature the egg and create a very robust, stress resilient environment that will allow a fertilized egg to thrive. So when we look at things like uh, mood, ability to withstand high intensity, uh, even things like the immune system, we look at that low hormone phase and everything is on point to be very stress resilient. We know that women's immune systems are really good at fighting off virus and bacteria. But after ovulation, the body's like, well, we don't want to fight off sperm. So we're going to become more pro-inflammatory and fever response. So we see a higher amount of just systemic inflammation after ovulation. When we're looking at fluid and fluid balance, we see that there's a drop in the plasma volume after ovulation because of a switch in estrogen and progesterone. When we're looking at mood and sleep, we see that leading up to ovulation, sleep is pretty sound and pretty um, good at, with getting women into slow wave, deep reparative sleep. And right around ovulation, there's a dip in your core temperature. So there's a really good like amount of sleep that's happening with that dip in core temperature. But after ovulation, core temperature starts to come up and progesterone drives so many things. It changes um, vagal tone. So women have a really difficult time getting into parasympathetic responses. So they're more sympathetically driven. We see more and more awake and arousal episodes during sleep. REM sleep decreases, slow wave sleep decreases. And when we're looking at immune system, like I said, we have more pro-inflammatory. We also have an increase in protein oxidation. We have a decrease in fluid and fluid balance. We have a change in our heat tolerance and our heat load capacities. So across the menstrual cycle, there's two major um, time periods to really look at what's going on and how do we kind of leverage the way the body's responding in a natural standpoint to this basic reproductive function and use that to our advantage for training, not performance per, per se, because we know from a vast majority of research that there's really no impact on that one point in time in performance because there are other things that come into play from a psychological and athletic skills standpoint. But when we're looking at training and we can look at hormones are low, body's really resilient to stress, we can load it up and recover well. Then after ovulation, when things are starting to, estrogen, progesterone are starting to come up, we have more pro-inflammatory responses, we can't access carbohydrate very well, our core temperature is elevated, probably not the time to, to try to hit a PR in that high intensity. We have to look at um, what are we doing for reps and sets if we're having such a massive inflammatory response? What kind of adaptations are we going to get? So when we start looking at, at those aspects, we can nail it down to improve the training potential, which then feeds forward to improving performance potential. Okay, I have a couple of questions about yeah. all of that. Firstly, can you just repeat the menstrual cycle? I just want to make sure everyone's clear about those different phases. Yeah. So day one to around day 13 or 14 is a low hormone phase called the follicular phase. In that, you have the bleed phase, which can be five to seven days. And then you have the mid follicular phase where estrogen starts to come up right before ovulation. Then you have the ovulatory phase, which of course is ovulation. After that, you have the luteal phase, which is early and late luteal phase. Late luteal phase is about the four or five days before the next period starts. And this is when the hormones start to drop and we see the biggest inflammatory response. Because mm -hmm. um, the body's like, now I need to shed tissue. I better, uh, you know, really create an inflammatory response to get rid of it. 
So there's one, two, three, four, five distinct areas within the menstrual cycle. But for just basic concept, we have low hormone follicular, high hormone luteal phase. Got you. And I think you answered one of my other questions, but I, you spoke there about performance. So there, there really is no benefit to, let's say you have, someone has a particular single event that they know they have in six months time. There, there's, there's not going to be some athletes who are at a particular stage of their cycle who will be at a, an advantage over other athletes who are at a different stage of their cycle. So every woman's cycle is in individual to them, right? This is why we say track your menstrual cycle and find your patterns. Uh, so say a woman knows that her key event happens on day 23 of her cycle and she always feels flat and has really kind of negative mood on that day. Well, there are things that we can do to mitigate that. So we can look at using more branched chain amino acids, increasing protein intake, increasing carbohydrate availability, really looking at hydration status leading up to that. So that levels that hormone playing field. And then we have to have that positive self-talk where there's no hormonal effect according to what we know on performance. So this is where those athletic skills of positive self-talk to eliminate that perceived advantage or disadvantage because, you know, maybe someone has a really good day on day 23, regardless of what they do on their menstrual cycle, but day 24, they're really flat. So mentally they're like, yes, okay. But then also we know over the course of six months of training, we can have irregularities and ovulatory um, cycles. We can see shifts in um, cycle length. And, you know, right before Kona Ironman, I get so many emails from women who are like, I don't know what happened, but I feel like my period is going to start on race day. And usually it doesn't. It, it, you know, it's a week out or it's late. It's like, it's okay. It's because you're tapering, your body's under different stress, and we want your period to come on race day or we want it to come the day before or even the day after, but we can work with that. As long as you know, we can work with that to make you capable of hitting whatever PR you want to do on that day. Is it common for women to feel low energy the week before their period? That was something that was sent in to me by, by num numerous women when I um, let the community know that we were doing this episode. It is absolutely normal. And this is where we're looking at, okay, if you were to look at the menstrual cycle from a training periodization scope, we would say that week before your period, we want to use that as deloading. Because this, again, like I said, you have a lot of um, neurotransmitter changes. So you have um, less density and activation of your serotonin receptors after they've already been heightened by estrogen. So people start to feel flat and anxious. We have fluid shifts because of the way progesterone affects aldosterone. So you start to feel a little bit bloated. Um, definitely less power because we have changes in central nervous system. Um, I mean, we have increased amount of protein oxidation, so it's harder to recover. And a lot of women in those five days leading up to the period have really disrupted sleep because the sleep architecture changes. So they get less slow wave sleep. Part of that also we're trying to tease out is, okay, if this is natural and they're getting the readout of they've had poor sleep, how is that affecting their mood? Or if it's natural and they're told this is normal, you didn't have a poor sleep, then would that positively affect their mood? So that's that psychological profile as well. But in general, yes, the few days before your period start, a lot of women do have low energy. And all of this information that we're talking about, I know you've mentioned Kona and I've mentioned athletes, but... Would you say that this is important for uh, all women, even those that are just sort of doing recreational exercise, important information that can help them feel better? Yeah, I tend to tell people that if you exercise on purpose, regardless of what your perception of level is, if you exercise on purpose, you're an athlete mm -hmm. because no one's gonna get up at five o'clock and go to the gym and hammer themselves for no particular reason, right? So if we're looking at just general working mom who has to get up early, go to the gym, do whatever, be home in order to be back before the kid wakes up, get the kids ready, get the kids out the door, then get to work, you want that one hour session to really work for you. So if we're looking at how are we maximizing our fitness capability, then let's work with our physiology. 
And I'm not telling people that they have to work out every day. It's like, okay, well, let's look what works in your schedule. And say you love this boot camp, but you realize that you've been thrashing yourself at this boot camp all the time and you're not seeing any results. Well, maybe it's because you happen to be going to the most of the boot camp classes in those, you know, high high hormone days where you're not going to get the best adaptations. So let's revisit what you're doing according to how you feel and your cycle to try to maximize your efforts because you are putting in that effort. Mm -hmm.